Hello everyone, this is Monica Lupion and today's presentation is about two and three dimensions, steady state conduction. This is part of the online course CE318, Heat and Mass Transfer. This is the content of my presentation. First of all, an introduction where we will review the concepts that we learned already in lecture one and lecture two and then we'll focus on two and three dimensions steady state conduction, corresponding to the chapter 17.4 in your textbook. We will first define the general equation, and then we will discuss three different methodologies to solve the general equation. First way will be just an uh, analytical method, so just solving the equation using mathematical tools, Second one, we will uh, use um, some graphs based on the concept of J factors. We'll learn more about this. And finally, numerical method, commonly used by um, softwares like, for instance, uh, MATLAB. And finally, a summary. So for the introduction, we are going to review the uh, concept that uh, we learn in lecture one and lecture two. Regarding the fundamentals of heat transfer, we learned that there are three main uh, basic mechanisms of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. And we also uh, went through the uh, Fourier equation in the case of conduction and the Newton's uh, cooling law in the case of convection. We haven't discussed much about radiation, but there is a course, uh, a lecture, specifically uh, discussing radiation. We also learn how to uh, calculate the Fourier equation when we have different geometries. In particular, we saw the cases of a flat flap a hollow cylinder and a hollow sphere, and also when we have different configurations in series and parallel. We learned as well a way to um, express the Fourier equation and the uh, Newton's uh, cooling law by using the uh, concept of thermal resistance. Using that concept, the heat rate is equal to the delta T over something that we call thermal resistance. In the case of conduction, that thermal resistance is equal to the delta X or the thickness over the thermal conductivity times the area. And the area is defined in a different ways depending on the geometry, as you can see here in this table. What happens if we have uh, a body with uh, different material compositions? Then the uh, thermal conductivity and the dimensions will be different. How can we calculate that? We uh, study in lecture number one that we can make an we can make an analogy with the electrical circuits. So we can consider each of these sections here as uh, one resistance uh, that we define as thermal resistance and define the heat rate as delta T over the thermal resistance, depending whether if these elements are in series or, or in parallel, then we can either directly sum or if the, if the elements are in parallel, it will be the inverse of the um, thermal resistance. As for the lecture two, one dimension steady state conduction, we um, discussed the general equation of heat conduction, uh, which was uh, based on the analogy with the momentum transfer. Then we define the conditions for one dimension steady state conduction and the general equation um, to, takes the form of the Laplace equation here. 
An interesting concept is the uh, utilization of extended surfaces or fins. Uh, we are able to use to increase the surface by using these uh, fins and therefore the heat rate can be optimized. It's important also to remind you the concept of uh, fin efficiency that we can determine by using some graphs like this one that you have in your textbook. When we did the analysis of the heat transfer over a fin, when we defined the fin efficiency, this is the general equation here that we can use to determine the uh, total heat rate when we have fin elements. And this is just an example on how we can apply the electrical circuit analogy to determine the heat rate depending on the delta T and the different resistance. Okay, so now let's move to the uh, focus on the presentation today, which is a two dimensions steady state conduction. We have exactly the same general equation that we defined in previous class. So the dependence of the temperature with the time is equal to the thermal diffusivity, Laplacian of T, plus a term related to the heat generation. If we don't have any heat generation and we have steady conditions, we still have the same uh, Laplace equation, no matter if we have one dimension, two dimensions, or three dimensions. In the case of having two or three dimensions, of course, the, of course, the problem uh, can be more difficult to solve than if we have only one dimension. And um, we have three different alternatives here as well. One is directly the resolution, the mathematical resolution using analytical method, like separation of variable. Second one is the graphical method. In this case, um, we can use the shape factor concept that we're going to see in a minute. And the third one is the numerical method using finite elements um, such as, well, MATLAB is uh, one of the um, programs that we can use to solve this type of equations. Uh, let's begin with the, a general case uh, when we have two dimensions here, x and y. The general equation will take the form indicated here. And then it's also important that we know how to deal with the boundary conditions. Um, it's important that we know how to define and it's important that we know how to apply the boundary conditions. If we solve, if we want to solve the uh, general equation using analytical method, one of the uh, tools that we can get, that we can apply, is a separation of variables. Um, this is just a methodology that you can follow. First of all, try to sim simplify as much as possible the partial derivative equation. Then try an error to convert the partial derivative equation to ordinary derivative equation. Uh, in most cases, ordinary der derivative equations are much more easier to solve than partial derivative equation. Try an error to determine the constant in the equation by applying the boundary conditions. And if we have some dependence with time, you can also need to you also need to take into consideration the initial conditions. In the previous example here. If you apply the boundary conditions indicated and after a few um, mathematical developments, then this will be the solution. This one will be the solution for the temperature. If you want to take a look uh, at the different calculations in detail, you can uh, go to your uh, textbook and you can follow all the different steps. As I mentioned, in previous classes, uh, the 
uh, all these um, mathematical equations um, and how to convert from partial derivative equation to ordinary derivative equation is not in, within the scope of this course. Of course, we assume that you already know because you have already taken a few courses covering that material, but it's not the main purpose of this uh, course, heat and mass transfer. What about the utilization of a graphical uh, method? We can define the shape factors as it is indicated here in this expression. So we include this term S indicating shape factor. And this S will take into consideration the different geometries. This method here is way much more simple than the analytical resolution in most of the cases, but it's limited. For instance, we need to assume isothermal conditions. If we don't have isothermal conditions, then we cannot apply this uh, graphical method. In your textbook, you can find a table like this one indicating the uh, most common uh, geometries that you can find and what would be the corresponding shape factor S. So if you have a geometry indicated here in this table, you only have to define S in the table and then use this general equation for the resolution of heat rate. Okay, the numerical method. We're not going to go into the uh, details. Uh, basically, what you do uh, when you consider finite elements is to have like a matrix uh, where comprising the surface and the interior of the, of the body the, where you are doing the evaluation of the heat transfer. And then you apply the general equation. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into the different details because, well, most of you already know how to use MATLAB and other uh, programs that help you with the mathematical resolution. So just to let you know that this is also a possibility when it comes to solve um, general equation for heat transfer. So finally, the summary. So we learned that the general equation of heat conduction is this one. So partial derivative of the temperature over time is equal to the thermal diffusivity Laplacian D of the temperature plus the um, generating, uh, generation of heat over the density and C sub P. We know uh, three different ways to solve the equation. First of all, the analytical solution using, for instance, separation of variables. When it comes to uh, complex geometries or complex conditions, in most of the cases, the uh, general equation cannot be solved by analytical solution. And we can either uh, choose the graphical method or if the geometry is complex, normally the numerical method. For the graphical method, um, it's relatively easy, but it's limited. For instance, we need to have isothermal conditions. And it's as simple as incorporating a term S in the equation of the um, uh, heat rate. And this S depends on the geometry. Um, we can have, we can, there are tables available where you can check the values of S for the different geometries.